Boom! Old Forester Prohibition, the 2022 Whiskey Whistle Bourbon Whiskey of the Year. Stay tuned. Howdy, my whiskey people. Mark Kaufman here from Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, Winterpeg, the center of North America, bringing you Old Forester Prohibition. This is the 2022 Bourbon Whiskey of the Year here on Whiskey Whistle. For any price range, we had the Jim Beam Single Barrel 108 Proof. This is the Bourbon Whiskey of the Year under $50. And the Old Forester Prohibition is the outright bourbon whiskey of the year here for Whiskey Whistle. So hopefully you are able to get this in 2022. I'm sure you will. I see it's available at uh, uh, places in Alberta. It's available at places in, in Ontario. In Manitoba here, we only get the basic Old Forester, which is great. I do have a review of that. You can check it out in the description below. But I would highly recommend bumping up the this expenditures a little bit and grabbing the Prohibition style. This is 57.5% alcohol by volume, 115 proof. That is big. Let's get that poured first of all. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Good stuff. That's what happens when you pour with the wrong hand because I'm left-handed. All right, beautiful. So yeah, so uh, price-wise, uh, between about $65 and $85 Canadian here in Canada. And I see it's roughly about $60 plus or minus in USA um, in American currency. So kind of a very similar price point, actually. In fact, if you can get it for $65 Canadian with no, no further taxes added, you're rocking it. So... Grab that if you do see it. I highly recommend it. Obviously, obviously I do. All right, so check. Let's check the color out first of all. This is decidedly darker than the uh, the Jim Beam single barrel. This is much more. It's beyond copper. It's brassy. It's um, a slightly like a, not quite mahogany, but getting there. Very very dark hue. And a couple of fun things about Old Forester. This is 100% column still, copper column still bourbon, which, which I think is very cool. Of course, um, all of the, the still, uh, uh, still exit proof requirements still apply. So in fact, when you take a column still and you run it uh, to a lower ABV, the outcome would be you know very, very similar little different but very very similar to uh, to pot still the benefit for the distillery is obviously quantity they can they can make a whole lot of that um, the, the benefit for the um, the consumer um, well there's really no worries about uh, the heads and tails because the still basically takes care of that which is cool um, so that's that's a fun thing um, and I think also because it's just all copper and a lot of other distilleries do use uh, stainless, the copper really does a great job of um, keeping that very, very smooth and tasty as far as the new make is concerned. All right, let's check the legs out. I'm expecting the legs to be a little showier. However, again, keep in mind this is very high proof. And as we deviate from 48% ABV, 96 proof, uh, which is the most viscous for a water alcohol mixture, um, then obviously you're moving away from viscosity for that, but then you get the content from the uh, the barrel that uh, comes into play as well. The barrel, the uh, for Scotch whiskeys, uh, the previous content also plays a role. Okay, here we go. What do we got here? much showier than the uh, the Jim Beam single barrel. Um, thicker as well. Medium speed on the first legs and uh, quite slow on the secondary legs coming through right about now. So I'm expecting that to have a much richer, fuller mouthfeel, juicier in terms of how it feels in the mouth. And uh, let's see if that is correct. So we'll get on to the nose. And before I do that, don't forget, hey, subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. It's right over here. Click the emblem, then hit the bell. 
ding, ding, so you're notified of future Whiskey Whistles. And if you're enjoying Whiskey Whistle and you like what I'm doing, I got some uh, bourbon reviews, a lot of scotch reviews, some Canadian whiskey reviews, and then a good smattering of other stuff from all over the world. Soju from Korea, Palinka from, uh, from Hungary, and um, all other types of spirits, cognac. I need some Armagnac on the channel, but um, I'd say that uh, scotch whiskey and bourbon whiskey and Canadian are probably the three most that I review on the channel. And I'll even have some get this some crazy expensive vodka coming up soon so we'll check that out you'd think that vodka was vodka but let me tell you no it's not that's the legs let's get into the nose now shall we i mean it's just so much bolder so much um ramped up now um, mash bill wise they're very similar the single barrel from jim beam was 75 13 12 for corn rye corn rye malted barley this one is 72 18 10 so a little bit less corn a little bit more rye and um, a typical amount of uh, of malted barley And interestingly, I'm getting more fruit. I'm also getting more, um, uh, more, more sweet and yet bright spices. I've got like some candied orange rind. I've got some um, uh, sweeter cinnamon, like fresh, fresh cinnamon, and uh, some nice sweet nutmeg. And for fruits, again, that orangey note. There's also a butter toffee type of a, a flavor, uh, a scent coming through there on the nose as well. No apple here, and I don't really get the straight up corn, um, roasted corn, corn silk. I'm not getting that here. But you know what? Get this, some corn syrup, beehive corn syrup. Do they make that anymore? I don't think they do. But some beehive corn syrup here. Mom, pff, she loves that stuff on her pancakes. She would love this. All right, on to the palate. Cheers, folks. And if you're in England and you're wondering what the heck is beehive corn syrup, it's not unlike your golden syrup. Um, obviously a different product but the the flavor the feel uh the butteriness is very similar hmm. <laughs> oh this is just all day every day a fantastic bourbon so flavorful on the palate and more of the same we've got the spices we have the the, uh, the citrus the really sweet orange um type of a uh, flavor almost like 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 uh, earl gray tea with those uh, bergamo oranges the rye the added rye is really really coming through here and I think that also is part of what happens with a column still and uh, certain components of, um, of, of the rye coming through. It's not as astringent. It's not as tannic. It's got some nice, sweet, bitter flavors, though. Mm. And there's that crisp, slightly chalky, um, bright, parsley, minty, 
uh, type of a note there. Again, that's the rye talking. We've got some um, some nice hot buttered toast. We've got the uh, the butter caramels coming through as well on the palate. But again, if I was given this blind and someone said, Mark, what proof is this? I would say that it was 50, 52. I would not guess that it's 57 and a half. And the finish, exceedingly long, white pepper, sweet ginger, candied ginger, the um, butter toffee. And the the finish, the, the aftertaste of a piece of dark, darkly toasted white bread uh, buttered with uh, a little bit of uh, strawberry jam. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of water. Now, again, what am I adding here? I'm adding some spring water. Um, it's low mineral, but... Um, Personally, it doesn't change the spirit as much if you wanted to add branch. Um, if they have, I think they do have branch bottled for uh, um, for enjoying some bourbon and branch. But you're going to actually change the profile quite a bit with with that much mineral content. So if you choose a lower lower mineral spring water, I think you're getting pretty much the best thing. All right, so the nose with water, what's going on here? More morning breakfast, toast and jam. The uh, that butter toffee has kind of taken a back seat. The rye is actually ramped up here. And when I rock the glass, I'm really enjoying that interesting mix of it's a rye, it's a bourbon, it's a rye, it's a bourbon. It's really neat. Of course, it's only 18% rye. Um, you know, but funnily, if this were made in Canada, we would call it rye. Hmm. Isn't that nice? Um, that's a great sipping bourbon, um, something that you want to sit down on an afternoon, summer or the, or winter, and you know maybe watch the game, or maybe just chat with your your friends, your girlfriends, and uh, talk about uh, you know your kids or or school or whatever. As long as you're you know university age, twenty one and up. If you're in USA, eighteen and up here in Manitoba. If you're in North Dakota and you're not visiting Manitoba uh, in college, you're doing something wrong. Hmm. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> A crescendo of sweet orange candied rinds. A crescendo of the rye. It's sweeter. That, again, that butter toffee, not quite there, but everything else is just really ramped up here. And that's really making my mouth sing. Mmm. <laughs> Same great long finish. It's just more flavorful. And even after you swallow, you swallow again. And you get more flavor. It's kind of like, kind of like sucking on a piece of uh, licorice root, where no matter how long you keep that in your mouth, and you bite that on that that um, woody mass, and you get a little bit more of that juice, that sweet juice coming out. Hmm. Some puffs of a really, really nice, really, really nice cigar at the end. The dry draw, and um, my favorite, the last third, 
of a cigar. So there you go. What a, what a fantastic bourbon. And, you know, right off the bat, what do I got to do? I got to hug this thing. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. And I got to give it a big old smooch. Mm. Oh, <laughs> what a nice bourbon. Fantastic. Well, let's get on the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Old Forester Prohibition style. 115 proof. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 92 out of 100. You heard it. 92 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Old Forester Prohibition. Delicious. Fantastic. And, you know, just incredible. And, you know, you know, I mean, I'm sure you know who makes this. This is made by Brown Foreman. This is made by the same company as Jack Daniels. Now, I love Jack Daniels. Um, I like the single barrels. I like um, basically the single barrels. You know, I like some of the other, other, other bottlings too. Gentleman Jack was pretty nice. Um, any of the higher proofed Jack Daniels are great. There's some special editions. They're also very reasonable. This is a little bit more money, but I think that actually, but it's cheaper than the um, than the barrel proof Jack Daniels. So, and the proof is not that not that different, not that far off from um, uh, from that. And I think that if I were to choose between the two, the Jack Daniels is sweeter. This one is just more complex. Uh, no two ways about it. Delicious. So. I uh, love them both, but my goodness, this is fantastic. So go and grab this one. Do not hesitate. Do not test it first. Just run out and grab a bottle. Get that 60 bucks, plunk it down. Grab your bottle in USA. In Canada, it's going to be 65, 85 bucks Canadian. Not bad. Uh, that's about the price of a 12-year-old Scotch whiskey these days. And this is really, really excellent. So you're getting cask strength whiskey for your standard Glenlivet 12-year-old price. All right, folks, Mark Kaufman here for Whiskey Whistle. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Whiskey Whistle. I'd love to see you there. Support the channel with a dollar a month, $2 a month, uh, $2 an episode. Hey, jump in and support the channel with uh, with 10 bucks an episode. I love that. Of course, of course I would. And you would get a very, very special, your own little frame on the credits coming up at the end. So check that out. You also get advanced viewing of future whiskey whistles, and I'd probably bump you right to the front of the line for that. So thanks, everybody. Uh, what's next? Hmm, you'll have to wait and see. Take care. Bye now. Bye.